morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Vincent. Let us join together by praying for good vocations from our parish. That prayer is in our gather hymnal, the front inside cover at the top. And together we pray. Lord, you told us. Welcome to this celebration of the Eucharist on the third Sunday of Lent. Because we are beginning prayer, please silence your phone now or turn it off. Also, please know that we live stream the Mass in our upper meeting room. There are about 50 chairs in that space for any who would like to go. Now, in the spirit of Christian welcome, let's stand and take a moment to say hello to those who are in our pews. And also another little job, we have music sheets at the ends of the pews. Please pass those out now. That's for the offertory today. If you'd pass those on down so that all can see a copy. As we begin our celebration, let us pray together by singing number 899, Sweet Refreshment. We will be omitting verse 8. to the water come to the water drink of it freely drink, drink of, of it, it freely. freely taste God's own spirit taste, taste God's, God's own spirit sweet refreshment sweet refreshment Let the dawn of creation 
Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good morning to all of you. I don't know, is it good this morning? I'm not sure. After losing an hour and everything like that. We'll, we'll say it's good, okay? Uh, it's good to have all of us gathered together, and it's good to pray with our sisters and brothers who are out in uh, the world on a live stream, and so we welcome them here with us as well. Those who, who are uh, still having a little difficulty with their health and maybe need to pray with us uh, in their homes. So we all come together on this third Sunday of Lent, and we see about how we're called to drink of the water of life, and we'll hear about that especially in the gospel. Jesus is the life-giving water, so let's turn to him and ask for his many, many blessings for us today. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin. Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness so that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your great mercy. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? A little more, and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did. In the presence of the elders of Israel, the place was called Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord.
let's ring out our joy to the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come into his presence giving thanks. Let us hail him with a song of praise. If today you hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. Come, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us. For he is our God and we the people who belong to his pasture the flock that is led by his hand. If today hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, pardon not your hearts as at Meribah, as on the day of Messiah in the desert, when your foremares put me to the test, when they tried me though they saw my work. If today you hear his voice, pardon. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, brothers and sisters. Since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sechar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. 
Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. The disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who was saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not, do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. Jesus answered her, you are right in saying, I do not have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on the mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Your people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with a woman. But still no one said, what are you looking for? Or why are you talking with her? The woman left her water jar and went into the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say in four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, look up and see the fields ripe for harvest. The reaper is ready, is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life so that the sower and reaper can rejoice together. For here the saying is verified that one who sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the work, and you are sharing the fruits of their work. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me everything I have done. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, 
We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, Father, I think a gospel like that deserves a homily just as long, at least. So, at least. <laughs> you know, um, about a month or so ago, I went down to a conference in Dallas with about 20 of our priests and the bishop. And it was called Priests for an Apostolic Age. The main speaker at that, at that conference was Monsignor Shea. He was the president of the university where my, my son went to college, was a wrestler at the University of Mary. Um, brilliant man. And he'd written a, a little booklet that basically said from Christian, I think the title was from Christendom to the Apostolic Age. And, and the premise there, and boy, this kind of shocked me the first time I heard it. Bishop thinks this is pretty important. He, he showed that keynote, uh, a recording of that to all the clergy, the priests and deacons last week across the diocese. He'd given everyone the Monsignor Shea's book to read. Um, the premise is Christendom is dead. It's kind of shocking, isn't it? Christendom is dead. That we are really back in an apostolic age. That we have more in common with those people that we read about in the New Testament than we do with our culture 50 years ago. That we no longer live in a culture, that's what Christendom is, a culture that is formed and in line with Christian values. We're in missionary territory. And because of that, some people think, and I think they think of us Catholics especially, even more than other Christians, but they think we're a bunch of crackpots. We're not in line with, we're not with the times, are we? We're a bunch of crackpots. You have to admit, we do do some crazy things. Just look at this Lent. How do we start off? We start off by putting ashes on our face. We give up something we like, deliberately not do something we like. We don't eat meat on Fridays. And we cap it all off with foot washing, kissing an instrument of execution, and celebrating a dead man coming to life. To most of our culture, that just sounds crazy. But you know what? If that makes me a crackpot, I guess I am. We're accused of believing some pretty crazy things. Things like there really is a God and there really is a devil. We believe Moses hit a rock in our first reading with a stick and water came out. We believe in miracles. We believe in sin and we believe in mercy. We believe in love. We believe that the Pope is the successor of Peter. We believe that a virgin had a baby. We believe God became man and was killed for our sake. We believe that Jesus is present, body, blood, and divinity, soul too, in the Eucharist. Well, if that makes me a crackpot, I guess I am. But if sanity, according to our culture, is believing in a world without order, a life without purpose, a future without hope, well, I think I'd rather be a crackpot. But you know, the world has it wrong. We're not crackpots. We are cracked pots, though. We are vessels made to be filled with God's spirit. But we're chipped, we're broken, we're cracked. We're crackpots. We drip and leak, but we keep coming back to the well to be filled with the water that only God can give. We've been crackpots for a long time. Look at those grumbling Israelites in the desert in our first reading. God had led them out of savory. They had seen God in action. They walked through the Red Sea. They ate manna every morning. Still, they did not trust God. They grumbled because they were afraid they would die of thirst. And I'm sure they thought Moses was a crackpot when he took out that staff and banged on the rock, at least until they drank the water that gushed out of the stone. Still, even after seeing that and tasting that water, they would continue to doubt God. They were cracked pots that God would keep refilling. The water jar of the woman at the well may have been solid, but she had quite a few cracks. She'd been married five times and was living with another guy. 
On top of that, she was a Samaritan. Jews did not associate with Samaritans. You see, when the Syrians exiled many of the Israelites from northern Israel, they brought in foreigners in their place. The remaining Israelites, known as Samaritans, intermarried with those pagans and adopted some of their religious practices. Jews did not hang around with Samaritans. Though the woman was considered a cracked pot, Jesus offers her something greater than water from the well. He offers her living water. Well, that Samaritan woman left her jar and went, went to spread the good news of Jesus. Come see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? I'm sure some folks in that town thought she was a crackpot. But they came and they heard and they believed. It is amazing what God can do with a cracked pot. There's a story from India about a cracked pot. A man carried water from the stream every day in two large pots hanging across a, 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 a pole across his shoulders, one on each side. Now, one of the pots was perfect and always delivered a full portion of water at the end of the long walk from the stream to the house. But the cracked pot arrived only half full. Day after day, the man arrived at his home with one and a half pots of water. Of course, the perfect pot, well, he was very proud of his accomplishments, perfect to the end for which it was made. But the poor crackpot was ashamed of its own imperfection and miserable that it was only able to accomplish half of what it had been made to do. Finally, one day at the stream, the crackpot said to the man, I am ashamed of myself. Why, well, asked the man, what are you ashamed of? The pot replied, all this time I have only been able to deliver half my load because this crack in my side causes the water to leak out all the way back to your house. Because of my flaws, you have to do all this work and you do not get full value for your effort. The man said, as, I return to, as we return to the house, I want you to notice the beautiful flowers along the path. And as they went up the hill, the old crackpot noticed colorful flowers on the side of the path. And this cheered it up some. But at the end of the trail, it still felt bad because it had leaked out half its load. The man said to the pot, did you notice that the flowers were only on your side of the path, but not on the other pot side? That's because I've always known about your flaw, and I took advantage of it. I planted flower seeds on your side of the path, and every day while we walk back from the stream, you've watered them. I've been able to pick these beautiful flowers to decorate my table. Without you being just the way you are, I would not have this beauty to grace my home. We are all crack pots, but God has a purpose for each and every one of us. Despite our leaks, despite our cracks, God keeps offering to fill us. Despite our flaws, God still loves us. We're all cracked pots. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let's renew ourselves in our life of faith, remembering who we are. Maybe not necessarily the perfect people that we're called to be, but yet the disciples that Jesus has been able to look into our hearts and to, to cultivate to be the good people of faith that we are. And so I ask you this morning, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? 
Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith, this is the faith of the church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Thirsting for the living water, we come to our loving God with all of our needs and the needs of all creation. For the church may be renewed by the living water that flows from the heart of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For people of every race and nation, may they work together to bring peace to our world. Let us pray to the Lord. For our brothers and sisters around the world who suffer due to famine, drought, or lack of safe drinking water, may they be satisfied and blessed with what they need. Let us pray to the Lord. For our faith community, May these 40 days of Lent help us to discover anew the fruits of reconciliation with God and with others. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, may they come into God's kingdom of light, love, and peace. We pray especially for John Bosler, brother of Bob Bosler, and for Irene Pro, mother of Jeanette Buckite. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Today we pray for Glenn Grogene, for whom this Mass is offered, and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, the true living water, we ask you to hear these prayers and those that remain unspoken. Help us to acknowledge our sins, to listen to your holy word, and to find in you the path to eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Tears have fled me day and night, while some have said, Where is your God? I, thy recall, as my support's dry. sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, 
and grant that we who beseech pardon for our, for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Just a reminder for you, uh, for the season of Lent, our Mass parts that we have, they begin on number 308 in our Blue Gather hymnal, and then they follow from there, so number 308. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when Jesus asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her, and so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks, and with the hosts of angels in heaven, we praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, he broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. He gave you thanks, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Mortem Tua Manutis Pus Domine Et Tuel Resurrectione Profitea Done Verenias Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, 
and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking in this sacred mystery, Almighty Father, Give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, with Edward, our Bishop, with all the bishops throughout the world, with priests and deacons, and your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us always attentive to the needs of everyone, so that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and their hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed St. Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and martyrs, with our patron saints, especially St. Vincent, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, so that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, Lord, but see rather the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. body and the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much for your prayerfulness today. Just a reminder about a couple of things. Uh, don't forget about the Sacrament of Reconciliation that we're having during uh, the season of Lent. We offer it a number of times. We have it on Wednesday evening. And in fact, uh, all the parishes in Cape uh, St. Mary's and then the campus ministry. We have uh, confessions from 6.30 to 7.30. It's called The Light is On for You. So uh, there's going to be a, a visiting priest that we're kind of rotating among uh, the three uh, communities here in, in town. So this weekend, or on this Wednesday, we're going to have uh, the chaplain from the hospital at St. Francis with us. It's Father Saban. So Father Saban will be back in the confessional with the light on for you. And then also we have uh, confessions uh, on Friday at noon with Father Isaac, Father, Father Isaac, where did that come from? Father Alex, Father Alex and myself. It's too early, too early. Father Alex and myself. And then uh, also in the evening, uh, after Stations of the Cross at, uh, at 6.15, we'll have confessions around 7 o'clock. And uh, so those are some opportunities. And then always our confessions on Saturday afternoon, like we always have. So take advantage of that. And then the St. Gerard Circle will meet uh, this Wednesday evening in the lower meeting room, beginning at 7 p.m. So if you are... Uh, uh, a mom with a young child, that's, the, that's what the St. Gerard's uh, circle is all about. It's for you to be able to come and to uh, enjoy the, the company of, of other young moms. So uh, we also have on Friday, don't forget about it, our fish fry. And uh, that's sponsored by our men's association. And so I just want to remind all the men of the parish here, where you are part of the men's association, okay? So if you're not coming to the fish fry, I'd encourage you to do it. Come over and see what's going on, and maybe there's an opportunity for you to be able to uh, join in and help in some way during the fish fry. So come over and do it. I know this coming Friday is going to be a little bit of a challenge because our bishop, because of the Irish that's in him, you know, 
He's given a special dispensation because of St. Patrick's Day. So for those that want to eat corned beef, you can do that. But there's some requirements that you have to do for it. I think you should just stick with the, with the fish. We got great fish across the street on Friday with uh, the fish fry. So come over and, and uh, celebrate uh, the season of Lent, even on St. Patrick's Day, okay? The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.